Good evening, everyone. Thank you for carving a little time out of your very busy schedules to spend about an hour with us talking about financial aid. Uh, we're really excited to have you here. It looks like we've got a pretty full room of folks. So I'm going to pass it over to Amanda and Caroline. We're gonna kind of run us through everything this evening. Take it away, ladies. So I am Amanda Cornell. I am the College Access Program Manager for Lake County. Hi everyone, my name is Caroline. I'm the College Access Fellow for Casa Grande High School. And I'm Eli Weinsweg and I am the Director of College Pathways and I get to serve Sonoma, Napa and Lake Counties. So I get to work every day with these two amazing human beings. Thank you once again for joining us. We are really happy to have you all here tonight. All right, so 10,000 degrees actually um, helps out a lot of um, serving Bay Area counties. So as you can see on your right hand side, we have Sonoma, Napa, Marin, Contra Casa, and so much more. Um, and then on the left side, you can see some facts about our program. So we support about uh, 12,000 to more students and their families in eight Bay Area counties and work in 42 high schools, 40 community college, and 166 four-year college and universities across the nation. A little bit about what we do. We focus on supporting students to college, through college, and beyond. And ways that we do this is through college pathway awareness, preparation, college and financial aid advising and guidance, scholarships and financial aid management, college success support, community college transfer support, career and graduate school readiness, and alumni success. All right, and then to get on the same page, today's agenda, um, first we'll learn about what is financial aid, then we'll go more into details about the financial aid application um, and exactly what happens after we apply, and then we'll give you some information about scholarships and then how financial aid timeline process, the process looks like. All right, so what is financial aid? Financial aid is money that is gifted, paid, or lent to a student to be used to pay for a college expenses. Uh, why should you apply for financial aid? It gives you options. No matter what plans you have after high school, whether you were planning on going to a community college or for your university or even an, getting a certificate, applying for financial aid gives you those options. And at the end, you can see that you won't know what you qualify for until you apply. And so when you apply for that, you might be available, you might be able to receive scholarships, grants, work study, and loans. All right. And then um, so some of the stuff that turns away students from applying to financial aid would be um, I can't afford college or I'm undocumented and I can't get financial aid, I won't be, uh, I won't qualify for financial aid. So these are pretty common within our students. As you can see, these are all myths. When somebody says that they can't afford college, that is not true. There are many grants, scholarships, or loans that everyone can, uh, can receive. You just have to look for them. If somebody says that they're undocumented, they might not get financial aid because of that. Your undocumented status is not something that should be a barrier for you to receive financial aid. There are laws in California that help undocumented students receive financial aid and plenty of other resources. And I won't qualify for, it, for financial aid is also a myth. Loans are also a form of financial aid. And if you don't qualify for other types of aid, you may be qualifying for a loan as well. And you can also apply to as many scholarships. There's no limit on scholarships. All right, now where does all this money come from? So we have four main pots. So one is federal government, the other one state government, college and universities, and miscellaneous sources. What types of aid are there? As you can see, there's a few different types of aid you may be able to receive, such as gift aid, 
gift aid does not need to be paid back. And you can see gift aid are in forms such as the Pell Grant, Cal Grant, 10,000 degree scholarship, or other scholarships you may apply for. Um, work study. Work study is money that you earn through a job on campus. So a job that you may be able to get is at the library or the bookstore. And loans. Loans are borrowed money, so they do need to get paid back after graduation. Some of the loans you may see are subsidized and unsubsidized loans, Parent PLUS loan, and the DREAM loan. Okay, and then let's talk about what does financial aid actually pay for? So most importantly, right, it's the cost of attendance, the total cost that you, it'll cost you to attend your college. And then this amount includes additional college related expenses that are in addition to your tuition and fees. So some of these things are overlooked at when applying to colleges and we mainly focus on the tuition, but some of the things that we may miss are room and board, books and supplies, meal plans, technology, um, transportation, personal care, and social life. Filling the need. So after you find out your cost of attendance, you will then be able to fill that amount, the 26000 up with the grants you, were, you receive, scholarships you receive, work study or loans. And this, the student fills the need with financial aid that was just mentioned. And then you are able to figure out what is left for you to um, supply after that. All right. And then let's talk about FERPA. Um, so it's family educational rights and privacy. Um, so basically it is your information um, that you uh, apply when for financial aid is just making you sure that it is secured and your information is safe. So it's a federal law that protects all personal information reported in any educational document. This includes financial aid and college applications. So again, all information provided will be only um, accessible to the colleges and the students who apply for it um, that includes that they include on their financial aid. So it's completely secured and confidential. And a new assembly bill that was recently passed is called AB 469. It requires that you that students complete a FAFSA or CADA application to graduate from high school. The FAFSA looks something like this when you log on to the website studentaid.gov. The FAFSA is a free application that allows you to access federal and state aid. It opens on October 1st and closes on March 2nd. The FAFSA is generally for students who are U.S. citizens, legal permanent residents, and individuals with granted asylum. When you get to the FAFSA, you are required to create an FSA ID. The FSA ID allows you to have a unique username and password to log in. It also is how you legally sign the FAFSA at the end before you submit it. And the FSA ID is required to use every time you renew your FAFSA. It also requires you to set up verification methods and gives you a backup code as an alternative verification method. When you create the FSA ID, you need to use your full legal name and your social security number. It is important to know that each social security number, email, and cell phone number can only be used for one FSA ID. So if you, so if a parent and a student is, is creating an FSA ID, they both need to have separate email address and a separate cell phone number. And I will add on there, thank you, Amanda, that backup code that's circled in red is very important. I would almost tattoo that on your arm because that's your code. If you lose your multi-factor authentication, this is the only number that you're going to be able to use to, re, um, to get that information back. So write this down somewhere very, very safe and remember it. Also, students and families, Really important that you use the same legal name on every document. If you have two last names and you're going to use those, be consistent. Don't use two names on one document and then one last name on the other. It can get very confusing and it can really make your paperwork kind of a nightmare. So our, our, rec our strong, strong, strong recommendation is that you use the same name on all of your documents. Please be consistent. It will make your life uh, much easier.
Uh, there's a couple of FAFSA questions I can answer live too. So the first one is, is it better to apply early on for FAFSA or wait closer to the due date? The best thing to do is it opens October 2nd uh, or 1st this year. You need to, you should apply as soon as you can. The sooner you apply, you'll find out the um, amount of money that you'll be awarded sooner. And it makes your uh, decision to enroll in, in whatever school you're looking at um, sometimes clear. So yes, do not wait, apply the minute you can. Uh, it'll also make your student's life easier uh, throughout their senior year when they're not going to get hassled all the time to complete this. So yeah, yeah, as soon as you can, please complete your FAFSA. Okay, the second question. Uh, would you recommend using a school email or a personal email? Great question. So seniors at the end of their year, you know, over summertime, the schools kind of disappear their school emails. So we would strongly recommend you use a personal email, one that you'll be able to use throughout your college experience as well. So uh, create that email if you don't have it and make it a one that's kind of a professional email, um, not one. I, I like to make fun of my sister-in-law. Her email when she was a little kid was horse lover 23. Well, that's kind of a strange email to have when you're an adult. So we recommend for our students to use appropriate um, professional emails. And if they don't have one, uh, using Google to create a Gmail is a really easy and, and um, effective way to do that. All right, next question. So does the parent or the student need to complete FAFSA? Both. It is a, uh, a shared commitment. The student will do some and then the, the, the family will do some as well. So yeah, work together on it. Uh, if you get stuck, that's what 10,000 degrees we are here and solely exist for is to support you in that process. So uh, it is definitely a two human being activity, the student and the family. The next question on here is, uh, can I submit FAFSA before October 1st? No, because it does not open until then. When it opens, yes, you can do it right away though. So uh, not before, but on the first you're able to. These are wonderful questions, everybody. Um, students create FSA ID or does a parent? Both. Should a parent or a student be setting up FSA ID? I think I just answered that. Both. Next question on here. Do you recommend that the student only create the FSA ID? Why would the parent create one? Both have to because many parents claim students as dependents and because they're looking at tax information, it's important that both parties have that. Yes. My son is a junior. Should I apply? Yes. If your son is a junior, you are on top of things. We love seeing you getting engaged so soon. But really, uh, financial aid is a, a senior year project. And so what we would recommend is continue encouraging your student to have great grades and to continue having your tax documents in order so that when uh, financial aid season does come next October, you are ready for it. Do you recommend that both parent and student have separate logins? Yes, they will need it. Which year of tax returns are required? Great question, 2021. The 2021 tax year is what we are asking for for your taxes. Well, not we, the federal government, but that's what we use is uh, last year's. Because right now we're working in 2022. And so that's, those tax numbers are hard to kind of corroborate. So we use the past years. What tax rule will this be based on? 2021. If a student lives with two parents who are married to each other, do both parents need to set up an FSA ID? No, just one. But if the family is divorced or separated, yeah, both parents will need to complete an FSA ID. Is there money we borrow or are they going to give the due? Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. So financial aid is free money. So when we talk about FAFSA and CATA, that is money that you do not have to pay back. When we talk about student loans, that is money that you have to pay back. So what our job is at 10,000 Degrees is we try to find as much free money as possible for you and your student. So we really work hard at accessing FAFSA or CATA funds and scholarship funds. At the end, there's always a little bit of money maybe left over that we have to look at how we can close that gap. That might be through loans, that might be through student work, um, and we can talk one-on-one -on -one about that also.
What is financial aid will help in college? Yes, financial aid is that free money that we're talking about that is going to um, help your student pay for school that you do not have to pay back. It is free money from the government. In my, if my name is different from my students, we each have a FAFSA, how will the government know we're the same family? Um, you'll do that through some of the, uh, the ID information. It's okay that you have uh, different last names. My mom has a different last name than me. It was not a problem. So that's something that we're uh, very, very aware of and able to support you in. If we have two students in college, does the parent need two different IDs? Um, each student has their own ID, but the parent will use their same ID number for the other students in college. Great question. How do people find out what scholarships are available to apply for? Is there a website? Ha ha! You are at the right place because 10,000 Degrees is not only a scholarship or a financial aid supporter, but we're a scholarship house. And so when your student completes financial aid, they should also be completing our scholarship. And we'll get to that in this presentation. Woo! All right, those are a lot of awesome questions. Thank you all so much for those. We're gonna continue our, our presentation, but please continue asking the questions and we will answer them uh, as we get to them. All right, moving on. Okay, so here is a more in-depth idea of the multi-factor authentication. First, you have step one, you create your FSA ID, you log in with your username and password. Step two is the multi-factor authentication. You either use your phone, your email, or the authenticator app to get that code. And if you do not have the multi-factor authentication option, you can use the alternative, the backup code that you saved everywhere. Okay, now we're switching off to the CADA application. Um, so this is the California Dream Act, and it has the same deadline as the FAFSA, right? It opens in October, closes in March. Um, this is access to state aid only, and these are for my students who are AB 540. So this includes students who are undocumented or those who have a social security number because of either DACA, TPS, or U visa. And we'll go more into detail about CADA. Okay, so first we wanna make sure that um, you know if you're eligible or not. So what makes an AB 540 student? And so it exempts students from paying out-of-state tuition or non-resident tuition. And a student must have attended three years of California school, either um, K through 12th grade, a community college or adulthood. And um, that person should also obtain a California high school diploma, GED, CHSPE, associate's degree, or a minimum of credit requirements to transfer. And then also, all students who are AB 540 must also apply to the AB 540 affidavit affidavit. Um, also, the residency classification form for each school they are considered um, to attend. So this form makes, so for each form, make sure that you apply to the one, to the school that considers you for in-state tuition only. And somewhat similar to the FAFSA, parents also create um, a parent pin or a signing for the California Dream Act. So a parent pin asks, asks uh, as an electronic signature. Um, this step is done after submitting. So it is also a four digit pin. Again, keep it safe where you are as a parent are gonna use it every year. Um, a parent pin information must match the parent information written on the submitted application. And just a reminder, if you have any questions, go ahead and put, type those in the chat and we'll be able to help you out in there. And then after hearing a bit about FAFSA and GADA, you might have a general idea of which application you'll apply to. I would definitely recommend either taking a photo of this page or screenshotting it. These are all the documents that you as a student or you as a parent are going to need for both applications, which either one you're gonna do, either FAFSA or GADA. Um, so just to get a general idea, um, students, you need your social security number, 
Um, if you worked, you need your W-2 form. Um, uh, you also have to file your tax information if you filed for taxes. Um, you also need a legal permanent resident. You have to list the colleges that you're interested in. Um, and then record of untaxed income, such as social security benefits or welfare benefits. And then as far as the parents, you'll also need a social security. If you worked um, in 2021, you also need your W-2 forms. If filed federal tax um, return, also go ahead and put those in. Parents' marital status, parents' date of birth, access to bank statements, um, and then record of untaxed income, such as social security benefits or, or welfare benefits. Here's a good question. If you list colleges and submit your FAFSA, but later add any colleges that you are applying for, can you adjust that? Yes, yes, you can. If a parent is self-employed, what does the government want as I don't have a W-2? I believe if you're self-employed, it's a W-9. And so you would, um, you would use that document instead. Okay, and so about middle class scholarships. So to be considered middle class um, when scholarships are looking at your uh, application, your income must be less than 217,000 and your assets must be less than 201,000. So students enrolled at a UC or CSU um, whose income exceeds the limits for, Cal for California grant A or B will automatically be considered for a middle-class scholarship. And so this dispels the myth that even if you are middle-class, you can't get scholarships. That is not the case. There are both Cal grants and scholarships available. And here's another question. What if I'm a citizen, but my parents are not? Caroline, how would you answer that? Yeah, so that means that the student it's, um, themselves have a social security number. So they're gonna go ahead and do the FAFSA application. But when it comes to their parents' information, what you're gonna go ahead and do is write 0000. And even if you click submit and it says it's wrong, you're gonna keep clicking, you're gonna keep clicking um, submit until it actually lets you pass. Once you're done with the whole application at the end, it's gonna say, okay, you as a student sign it. And also as a parent, you have to sign. Um, and again, so since that parent doesn't have a social security number, it will give you an option to print out the application in where your parent can um, physically sign it and you'll just mail it to the address that they provide you. So I hope that helps. Great, great response. Thank you. And then there's another question. What are considered assets versus work income? So assets are if you own property, um, things that you own that you wouldn't necessarily sell. So your house, that kind of stuff. Um, inheritance uh, and uh, other examples like that. Okay, and for those who are applying for private schools, this slide is for you. It'll give you more access to different type of scholarships and aid for your private schools. Um, so it's also requested by private schools as well. Um, it does open in October and the deadline does um, vary depending on the private school that you are applying to. Your first college that you put onto your application should be about $25 um, of a fee and then $16 for every additional school after that. Um, you might also be available for waivers, so I would definitely look into that as well. Okay, hey, the 10,000 degrees scholarship. This is exciting because 10,000 degrees does offer scholarship to the students who apply for it and it opens in October as well. So as soon as you submit your FAFSA or California Dream Act, you can apply for the 10,000 degrees scholarship. There is no GPA or test score requirement, and there is no citizenship or documentation status requirement. You only need to demonstrate financial aid and submit the FAFSA or California Dream Act. And when you apply for our scholarship, you're also put into a portal for hundreds of other scholarships. So we have one application, but it gives you and your student access to hundreds and hundreds of, of scholarships. The 10,000 degree scholarship is about $1,000 
for students who have documented status and about 1500 for students who are undocumented. So other than that scholarship, you're also put into a pool for many, many others that have many, many different um, cost figures associated with it. So when you are awarded our scholarship, the other beautiful thing is it's not just money, but you're then paired with a one-to-one -one near peer mentor that's gonna work with you to and through college or your post-secondary choices. The other really nice thing is that the scholarship is renewable for up to six years. So it's not just a one-time money, you can continually reapply for that and your fellow who you'll be working with uh, on your school campus will support you in this as well. And so it's not just a good luck, we'll see you later. We wanna work with you to make sure that you can support yourself to and through college. And the only requirement for you to get money from us from our scholarship is that you first submit a FAFSA or California Dream Act application and then starting in October, our scholarship opens up at the same time. So once you've completed financial aid, you will then complete our scholarship. That's the only prerequisite that we ask for is that you have completed your financial aid first. So there's lots of questions about other scholarships. Other scholarships that you might want to be aware of if you can get other scholarship information from the 10,000 degrees other scholarship website, your high school, College and Career Center has many options for scholarships. College and Financial Aid Department website. So the colleges you're interested in, their financial aid website and department will have more scholarships available for you. And you can also continue applying for scholarships while you're in college. And I will say that at no time should you ever pay for access to a scholarship portal or for support with financial aid. If someone is asking for money, that is predatory. All of these services are free, as you can see by you joining our webinar this evening, and all of our scholarship applications are too. We do not charge, nor should anybody. So if people are asking for you to pay for access, please let your alarm bells go off. You should stay far away from those places because they are trying to take your money, not give you money. All right, financial aid verification. Um, so this is when schools for ask for additional documents to verify the information you have already reported when, when have submitted your FAFSA or GATA application. So it typically happens around January and March. And how do you know if you have to be verified? So schools will add a to-do item on your college list or financial aid portal. We'll go more into detail what that looks like. Um, you can also contact your financial aid office on the school that you are applying to to confirm any additional information that could be needed. Um, and then what uh, gets verified? So your income report tax can get verified, uh, such as your tax transcripts or your W-2s. Um, your household size form for provided by the school, your dependency status, which is another form that is also provided for a school. Um, so basically, this is financial aid. Once you have they have received your application, maybe they might find some information that they're missing or some information that you may have put um, looks funky to them. So they will go ahead and mention it to you in your college portal. So that's why we highly recommend for each student to make a portal for each college that you apply to. And again, we'll go more into detail on that. Hey, financial aid offer letters. So the offer letter is a document that lists the school's cost of attendance and any financial aid the school's offering to the student. The only the schools listed on the financial aid application will provide an offer letter. So if you're making a list of the schools you're interested in going, go ahead and put those on your financial aid application because you will get the offer letter for those schools. When do students receive their offer letters? For four-year schools, you receive it shortly after they are accepted. And for community college, it's usually around May or June. Where can a student view their offer letter and award letters can be viewed in a student school portal in the financial aid section. All right, so going more into detail about student portals. Again, students have a portal for each school they apply to. 
Um, important for verification to other to-do list items, viewing financial aid offer letters, um, viewing um, admission status. Um, so again, to be clear, let's say I applied to the Santa Rosa Junior College, also to Sonoma State and UC Davis, UC Merced, right? I would have to go onto their websites and create a portal for each one of them because each school might require different things from you. So you constantly wanna be on top of those and log in constantly to see what they're requiring you. So how does financial aid work? First, you start with filling out the application, either the FAFSA or the California DREAM Act, that will generate an EFC, estimated family contribution, which that information is all sent to the school. And after that, the school generates a cost of attendance for you. That is then calculated with your grants and everything else that you get from the financial aid application that you receive, and you receive a financial aid award. Thank you. Um, but this is one of our last slides. So if you all want to take a photo of it or screenshot it, this is really important. I know that as a senior, you have a lot of stuff um, on your plate with a lot of deadlines, um, not considering that you are a student as well. Um, so if you're lost and you don't know where to get started, we did frame it in a timeline for everyone. So it gets a little bit easier. Um, so September, we're coming to an end of it, um, but you should have completed a college list um, and also research some scholarships. Um, in September, you should have also prepared for financial aid applications. So we did, um, I, I believe after this, we have another slide of the documents that you'll be needed so that it best prepares you for when October 1st rolls around. Um, in October and November, again, financial aid opens in October 1st. Our 10,000 degree scholarship also opens. And then uh, we also encourage y'all to look at for more scholarships. In December, you want to create your college portal. So all those colleges that you added on your financial aid um, application, you're going to want to also make a portal for those so yet you stay updated on your financial aid offer letter. Um, you also want to update your FAFSA or CADA with the schools that you actually applied to. In January and March, you want to complete any to-do list items on your college portal. So hopefully that verification has already um, kicked in in January or, or March. And then also college admission, admission decisions, right? And then in March and April, we want... Um, we can help you also look over your financial aid offer letter because each school that you apply to might give you a different offer letter and that might be tricky to understand. So we can help you do some math, right? So what to see what might benefit you more financially. And then your college decision day is May 1st. And then in summer, you should be submitting your last final documents, accepting your financial aid offer letter, and then your money should be getting um, dispersed to you so that way you're ready to go into college. And depending on where you go to school, the money may be dispersed directly to you or it may be dispersed to your school. That is really up to the institution. We have no control over that. So just be aware and check your mail. So this slide is uh, just a, kind of a reminder slide for you all. For students, these are the things that you're gonna need to complete your financial aid. For student, parents, families, same idea. And then just so that you all know, we have upcoming workshops throughout the year um, that actually don't just, are not webinar format, but we will actually sit with you one-on-one -on -one and support you and your family in filling these very complicated paperwork out. So our first three workshops are on October 5th, October 26th, and November 16th. And, and the way that works is that you will join a Zoom and then we'll put you in a breakout room with fellows and you'll get to have a private conversation there so you're not sharing your confidential information out with the world. Um, another question on here is I wanna go to a local two-year college and then a four-year university. Can I apply to the two-year college first and then in the future? Yes. Yes, financial aid doesn't care where you go to school. And in fact, if you apply to a two-year university within California and you apply for financial aid, it should be free. So that's kind of one of the beautiful things again about living in this state is that you are supported that way. And so you'll, you'll receive a financial aid award, but you'll also get to go to community college for free. 
So you'll have to pay for books and, you know, these the other supplies needed for school, but the tuition for your first year. And then depending on where you're at school, some of the colleges do the second year free as well. So lastly, we just want to quickly introduce you to some of the folks who you could possibly be working with in the regions that you live in. And so San Jose, San Francisco, and Silicon Valley, we call it now. We have Carla Moran and Regina Ramirez, and they work at high schools in San Jose and in San Francisco. In Marin and Contra Costa, we have Barbara Bravo, Kayla Itsun, and Ingrid Romero. They are our managers for the area. I'm going over this very quickly, but you can always go onto our website and find these folks with their contact information and reach out to them as well if you live in their area and have more specific questions. The Sonoma Napa Lower Lake team, Liz Perez, Stephanie Reyes, Ugo Kay, and Amanda Cornell, who is in here right now. So uh, with that being said, um, we're going to keep the webinar open for a few minutes to answer any questions that anyone has. Um, but other than that, if you have gotten what you need, you are more than welcome to jump off. I want to say thank you one more time for all of your time this evening. Uh, it was a pleasure getting to have a conversation with you all, even though we didn't get to see you. But we look forward to hearing from all of you very, very soon. I see a question, family income, is that have to be 210 or does it, or it doesn't have to be? For the, for the middle-class scholarship, you have, your family income has to be 200,000, 210,000 or less. If you make more than that, you will not qualify for the middle-class grant C, but you can still qualify for other scholarships. There's other scholarships out there that don't have um, financial needs associated with them, so we would still encourage you to complete your financial aid application, either FAFSA or CATA, and then complete our scholarship application because not all of our scholarships have a financial um, requirement. Um, please, I also encourage you all, go on our website, 10,000degrees.org, check out what we do. Um, you'll also see our faces on there and our email addresses. And if you have any other questions, do not hesitate to follow up with any of us. Once again, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Have a lovely evening, and uh, we will see you in the future.